In a time where territorial style was becoming the norm, where players like Chochikun would focus on making points in the corners as well as on the sides, never even looking at the center of the goban, only using it to crush your opponent in huge fights, looking more like a crazy war between two factions in a fantastic movie than a board game. One man stood his ground, developing his well-known style for which no one had the gut to replicate, Takemiya Masaki, with his cosmic go. When I saw Go for the first time, it was in the movie Pi by Darren Aronofsky. And at the time, what impressed me the most was the gracefulness of the black and white patterns created by the stones on the grid. And I found that even if it made no natural sense, those patterns had their own logic, like if it was a form of art from another planet. I loved them so much, I began looking at why those beautiful patterns emerged. After some games, not even understanding what an Atari is and when a group is alive or not, even wondering why is everyone telling me I don't have two eyes, blinded by my lack of knowledge, I began looking at strategies, or ways to place your stones in order to make something that at least makes some sense, or some logic in the chaos living in the head of every beginner player. And so, I read for the first time the term Cosmic Go. Ok, now tell me what is not magic just about those words. Cosmic Go. Every beginner seeing those words together just wants to jump right in the pool of mystery they seem to offer. Takemi Yamasaki seems to call it the natural style. This is Go, the natural way, was called a series of articles published by Takemiya in the British Go Journal. As if Go was only meant to be played on large scales. Ok, let's settle down a bit. First, what is Cosmic Go and who is that Takemi Yamasaki? Takemi Yamasaki was born on January the 1st in 1951 in Tokyo, Japan. He was very physically active being young, playing baseball every day up until the second year of elementary school. His father, Takemi Fujio, started a medical practice in Katsushika ward of Tokyo, specializing in internal and pediatric medicine. Being a 5 down player himself, he would often play Go with his patients, relates Takemi Yamasaki in a Kido magazine article. His father felt that his Go playing would be a stabilizing influence on his life, in order to somewhat counterpart his physically active hobbies. I probably just learned how to play by watching them, I did not dislike Go, but playing outdoors was far more interesting to me, you know. Torn between his love for sports and playing outside, he was given the task of learning a joseki every day by his father. He would often be forced to chase him around to make him play and study Go, until he was advanced enough to take him to a Go club. We can still see the man torn between Go and other activities today, as he wrote. If I hadn't become a professional Go player, I might have become a professional golfer, but I couldn't help playing Go every moment that I could. Takemiya, now 10 years old, with a level of 3 or 4 than amateur, a professor called Tanaka Mianichi would come to his Go club to give him lessons. Every week, he would play one game with him, where at the start he would put down 5 handicap stones. After some time passed, they would play even, with Takemiya just taking black. And all together, they played around a hundred games, learning the fundamentals of the game during this time. Now in the sixth grades of elementary school, he became an insay studying to become a professional Go player. He joined Kitani Minoru's dojo, becoming one of his students, alongside big names like Joji Kun, Otake Hideo, or Kobayashi Koishi. There, the other students would give him the nickname of Tako-chan, meaning octopus. Later, in the second year of middle school, he would become a professional Go player in 1965 at 14 years old. He advanced quickly to the rank of 3 dan when Fujisawa Shugo 
took a great interest in his training. They used to play fast teaching games and if Takemiya lost the game, he had to massage Shuko's shoulders for 15 minutes. During the 5th annual Pro Best 10 tournament, Takemiya managed to win against 3 professional night downs and 2 8 downs players being only 17 years old, which earned him the nickname the 9 down killer at only 15 years old. This was the happiest time of his life. To explain what Cosmic Go is, I would firstly say words like Moyo, Center, or things like Oh, don't mind the corners and the side, I don't care about them. And it seems like a lot of people see Cosmic Go as a strategy, where you only focus on the center and try to create large areas for yourself before your opponent invades it, as his only hope not to lose the game. It feels like a very greedy way to play, and in a sense, it seems true when we watch the games of Takemi Yamasaki and the ones of other people using this strategy. But one big nuance is that where people say Cosmic Go, Takemi Yamasaki say natural style. My style of play has been associated with the Moyo for so long that the word has practically become my middle name. But during a game, I do not consciously set out to create the Moyo. However, since I do strive from the opening on to achieve overall balance throughout the board, and by so doing utilize my stone with maximum efficiency. In many cases, this results in the development of a moyo. In the opening of a game of Go, one's eye naturally gravitates to the big points. Of course, big points are important, but more important than that is the relationship between strong and weak stones. This natural flow is a very artistic way of seeing the game as if every stone had relationships and forces like the planets and stars, keeping their orbit and momentum thanks to one another. And one should never stop the stones from dancing, like they had to naturally do. Takemiya plays with his heart. He plays moves which pleases and makes sense in the Go universe and in the complex mind of a strong player. By the way, you can test yourself on this website and check if the sandwich say and the cosmic style is for you or not, with 15 questions. Conversely, should one ignore general trends and balance in the game and try to force a moyo into existence unreasonably, there is little chance of success. This is why one must not oppose the natural flow or play, nor lose sight of the whole picture. This way of playing cuts across the development of a territorial style at the time, which was seen and is still seen today, especially since Salfago, as a more reliable way to victory. But doing so, he opened the way to a new way of thinking the Fuseki and the center, and was on his own avant-garde, boldly leading the way to a new style, guided by his own vision of the game. This new romantic approach led to, for instance, a new Joseki as seen here, only played by Takemiya, only replicated on very rare occasions by other pro players. But what may be the most well-known contribution he had made is certainly the Sanwensei, literally meaning triple star in Japanese, serving as a strong base for his cosmic style to expand during the game. The first appearance of the Fuseki was seen in the 1930s during the beginning of the Shin Fuseki, when the main corners, then sides, and finally center common strategy was deeply challenged by Gosegen and Kitani Minoru, but was only seriously considered in the modern Go era by Takemiya during his Pro Best 10 tournament in 1974. The fact that Takemiya was both a top contender and proponent of the Sanwensei helps to increase interest in the opening for the 70s to the 90s. These days, the emphasis is changing from corner, side, then center, to just side, then center, since it is difficult to develop the corner. We can thank Takemiya for this change. Korean players have always had to play to win in order to earn money, so they have concentrated on the corners and were afraid of the center because of its vagueness, and they did not research it. However, Takemiya was brought up by a rich family and the Japanese don't allow their players to think about money. So, he researched into this unknown area, 
Having been beaten several times by Chochikun, who found his weak points, he perfected his center strategy as a way of playing against Cho. He has done the most research and has shown us how fantastic, magnificent and deep the center is, like the universe. Before him, current amateurs and professionals used to avoid the 4-4 point. Now, this is the most popular opening. Cosmigo was, and still is today, a very popular strategy among beginners and amateurs, as we feel we can understand the style as it seems easy to play. The San Wensei and the Cosmic style avoids lots of Josekis and focuses on one and only one task. As easy as it seems, like everyone else who tried this at a good level, it is a very, very hard way to play. What Takemiya shows us is the freedom of Go. There is no single fixed way to play the game. It is remarkably open. We say that Go is about space, speed and freedom. Takemiya offers a useful lesson about the freedom of the game. As friendly and outgoing as the character of Takemiya Masaki seems, he is not to be considered as only a pro player trying a different style. He actually was winning with his own strategy, and he was winning a lot. We can, for example, see this game played against Yamabe Toshiro 9 Dan when Takemiya was only 20 years old and 5 Dan. His straightforward strategy was obvious, and he demonstrated his incredible fighting skills. Emerging from the thickness he allowed himself to gain, never scared of his opponent taking too much territory. Also incredibly demonstrated in this game where he became the winner of the first world championship, the Fujitsu Cup in 1988, when his fearful opponent, Win Kayo Nindan, a student of Gosegen, resigned after a beautiful game. He went on to win multiple titles in Japan as well as the Fujitsu Cup two times in 1988 and 1989, and the Asian TV Cup in 1989 and 1992. He even had a winning streak of a total of 16 games, ended by his opponent Omori Yasushi, Eidan, on December 12, 2005. Since then, he participated in multiple congress, where he could teach and spread his knowledge all over countries where Go is far less played than chess. And outside of Go, he even managed to win the biggest Japanese backgammon tournament, still loves playing golf sing and even dance cha-cha-cha from time to time. He still is the child he used to be and it seems like it will never change. I have so much respect for people doing things their own way, even if everyone is doing the opposite, and I have an incredible admiration if they succeed. I think that thanks to his career, Takemi Yamasaki opened the way to a new thinking of the game. In a time where AI is everywhere, and it seems like every player tries to play the same thing with the same strategy, we can take a step back, see a colorful game of Takemiya, be amazed by the artistic nature of his moves, and just wonder why we should even win in the first place. Because as an amateur player, I often forget about the simple question, why do I even play Go? Because yeah, having a crazy number of games won on a Go server is only a number. But a crazy feeling we get from a beautiful move, emerging from questions and thoughts we never thought we could have, or the joyful meaning of what seems like a bold but still very creative move wanting to go somewhere else, is all I try to care about now. We are all just servants of the Baduk God, but we can still have fun while playing. And outside of the outstanding number of things Takemi Masaki have brought to the Go community, this is the most precious thing we must cherish for our games and for our lives. This video took a while to make, as I had a lot of things going in my life. From now on I'll have more time. In the meanwhile, I have opened a Discord server for people wanting to help me with my researches for future videos. I have also created a Patreon, 
if you want to help me, all links are in the descriptions. Thank you for watching.